Good morning, everyone. Uh, I continue to talk on this text, Opening the Hand of Thought. And today I'm going to talk uh, section two of chapter eight, page 149, if you have this text. Uh, the title of this section is Zazen is our truest and most venerable teacher. Zazen is our truest and most venerable teacher. So basically, uh, in this title, he is, Uchamura is saying, Zazen is teacher. Zazen is our true teacher. Uh, but this title is not a literal translation. Uh, section two of chapter eight. <laughs> uh, he's saying two things. Zazen is one and something and another thing. And uh, what he says is, Zazen is, uh, in Japanese, honzon. And Zazen is shoshi. So he's saying uh, two things. Zazen is honzon and Zazen is Shoshi. And Honzon uh, refer to a uh, main Buddha. You know, uh, basically in the Japanese Buddhist temples, there are two main buildings, not, not a few big temples like a monastery, but the usual uh, small temples has two parts. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, called Hondo. Do means building or hole. And uh, the main Buddha enshrined within Hondo, Hondo is called Honzon. And this zone means to be respectable or venerable. So uh, the venerable kind of uh, object of worship, usually, the enshrined Buddha statue is a uh, uh, object of worship. People wo worship the Buddha statue. So this is most important thing in this temple. And another part is called Kuri. Kuri is a space people live. Uh, priest and their family the, uh, live in this area. And kitchen is there. And in the uh, huge, large monastic uh, monasteries, there are many more things. But these are kind of a uh, smallest structure, both uh, should be there to be a temple, a hole in which the main Buddha is enshrined and where people live. These two are very basic elements of, of uh, temple buildings. So Honzon means the Buddha statue, the main image or main uh, statue of the Buddha. So what Uchamuroshi is saying is our Zazen is main thing, main Buddha. And also our uh, <coughs> Zazen is true teacher. So he's talking two things, but uh, because it's difficult to say Zazen is, uh, you know, truly honorable, venerable 
ブダスタチュー。It's really doesn't make sense. So probably that's why we make both hon, this honzon as a, a, a adjective to、uh, modify teacher. Because this honzon, literal meaning of honzon means truly venerable or truly、uh, respectable. So he、uh, or we, I, I'm one of the translators. <laughs> so we put, interpret this as an adject, adjective of teacher. So most venerable and true teacher. But so if you read this section,、uh, you can see the first, first. One first three paragraphs in this section is about Honzon, about the Buddha statue. And only in the final、uh, paragraph he talks about the Zen is true teacher. So, you know, don't trust translation. <laughs> You know, when I finished translating some text, I cannot be happy, so happy. I know, you know, there is something twisted within the translation, and something is added, and something is lost. But if, when you read only translation, you cannot、uh, see it. So, translation is not so reliable. And、that is why I did, you know, Genzoe, you know, for 20 years to、uh, fill that kind of a gap between original text and translation. And what I'm doing now is the same thing. So he's saying that Zen is most important, venerable、uh, Buddha in the temple. So this temple is built. For the sake of、uh, worshipping this Buddha image, this can be Shakyamuni Buddha or、uh, in Zen or in Soto Zen temple, this most important main、uh, Buddha statue is usually is Shakyamuni. And in Pure Land, this is Amitabha Buddha. And in、uh, You know, other schools, they, are, they have their own main Buddha. And with what Uchamuro is saying, main Buddha, at least at Antaiji, is our Zazen. The reason why Antaiji is, was existing was to、uh, do Zazen, not to worship this、uh, Buddha statue. Uh, so let me read,、uh, start to read this section. I'd like to finish this uh, section. Uh, it has about one and a half pages.、Uh, so、uh, the, let me read parag paragraph by paragraph. The enshrined Buddha statue, enshrined Buddha statue. Uh, on an altar, you know, this is altar, is referred to as a Honzon. So, Honzon is a Buddha statue, the most important Buddha statue enshrined、uh, in Hondo and an object of worshipping. So, this is a reason for this temple、uh, existing. So, this is Honzon, what, what Honzon means. And, but the word really means, this word Honzon really means what is most, most or truly venerable.、Uh, uh, and what is of highest value. So, he 
change the word highest value. Uh, that this is the word he used in the previous section. In, a, in the previous section, he says, uh, <clears throat> to practice Buddha Dharma for the sake of Buddha Dharma, not for our personal benefit. So uh, our personal benefit based on our human desire is one thing. And uh, our zazen is not to uh, fulfill our desire, our personal self-centered desire, but uh, we practice, this zazen is uh, practicing Buddha Dharma, and we practice this zazen for the sake of Buddha Dharma. So uh, first he explained what is Buddha Dharma in his understanding? And uh, he introduced one uh, koan expression. Uh, if you have this text page 141, uh, this is a dialogue between two, uh, between the master Sekito and his disciple. He said, what is the essential meaning of Buddha Dharma? What is the essential meaning of, what is the essence of Buddha, Buddha Dharma? Then uh, Sekito, Sekito is a Zen master who wrote Sandokai. Sekito replied, no gaining and no knowing. No gaining is who took, and no knowing who So who is not, and talk is to gain, to attain, and chi is to know. So uh, he said, when we practice Zazen, sitting facing the wall, uh, we don't gain anything. Uh, you know, this is one of the origin of Sawakiroshi's expression, Zazen is good for nothing. So we don't get anything, and we don't know that means we, our zazen is not a uh, action or act activity to know something, but uh, just sit. Just sit without uh, gaining anything and without knowing anything. Then the student uh, asked, can you say anything further? What does this mean? You know. Our, this is our attitude during Zazen. Try not to grasp anything and try not to study or understand and think anything, but just sit. And uh, what Sekito said is the expansive sky, the expansive sky, big sky, does not obstruct the floating white clouds. Now this is a very po poetic expression. The great sky does not uh, disturb the white clouds are coming and going. And in this case, uh, our thinking is white clouds. So even when we sit facing the wall, somehow, you know, our white clouds, any kind, it's not only white clouds. Sometimes it's really dark or uh, black clouds. And sometimes we have storm in this sitting. But the great sky doesn't disturb. That means let them come and let them go. Nothing stay uh, forever. You know, there are so many thinking coming and going uh, in our Zazen. And, you know, I, I practice Zazen for many years, but uh, there's no one thought that never uh, go away. All thoughts are coming and going. And this, this Zazen or this 
expansive sky, which doesn't disturb white clouds coming and going. This is how our zazen is. Our zazen is like a big sky, and thinking, whether positive or negative, are coming and going like white clouds. So in this uh, expression, uh, both are there. And yet we don't uh, grasp or chase after uh, those thought coming and going. Just let them come and let them go. We don't grasp or we don't fight against or we don't uh, escape from just coming and going. That is the scenery of our Zazen, that is happening in our Zazen. And that, I think, in Dogen's teachings, this is how our, uh, not only our, how all things are within this universe. You know, uh, within this universe, things are coming and going, always changing. Nothing stays forever. Everything is changing, so it's really impermanent and no uh, fixed substance. So this is also an expression of how all beings are, you know, within, in my expression, within this network of interdependent origination, we are coming and going and coming and going. And within us, we are part, part of this network, but still within our brain, things are coming and going but we don't grasp we don't take we don't grasp means we don't take any action based on this thinking usually in our daily lives we do we try to do something i think it's good or sometimes i don't want to do but somehow i have to do all those kinds of scenery are happening but <clears throat> our beings are same as the white clouds in the sky, coming and going. And Uchamura said, this is Buddha Dharma, and this is our Zazen, and this is most venerable things. Uh, that is what uh, Zazen is, uh, Honzon means. Uh, let's see. So, what is of highest value and most worthy of veneration is the zazen of opening the hand of thought. This is how we express our body and mind with our lives to the structure of how things are. So he, think, he said, this is most value, highest value. And uh, he talks about uh, one uh, <coughs> incident at Antaiji. He said, once a visitor to Antaiji wanted to pay reverence to the Buddha statue in the Hondo, Actually, uh, this text is Zendo, but uh, at Antaiji we didn't have Zendo. We, we only had Hondo. You know, Hondo is a place uh, Buddha is enshrined, and Zendo or the Zendo is the place where uh, people practice the Zen. So Hondo and Zendo are two separate things. Or in uh, uh, formal monasteries, uh, Zendo uh, is not there actually. At, at least Toto Zen Monastery, we call it uh, Sodo. Sodo means monk's hall. So, uh, well, I, I don't have time to talk about 
monastic buildings, but uh, what Uchiha Bro said in this hon in, he, in the Hondo Atantaiji. So uh, Zendo sound like uh, uh, the uh, place where we people practice the Zen. Uh, you know, this is the same thing. You know, when we face this way, this is the Zendo. But when we face that way, that is the Buddha hall. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the small temple has need to be kind of a creative. With a, you know, this could be Buddha hall and this could be Zen, the Zen hall also. So we call this a Hondo. But uh, Hondo is not a, a common word in English. So we use Zendo where we sit. So we sit in the Zendo. So Buddha hall and uh, the Zen hall is one hall at Antaiji. Anyway, so a visitor asked Ujamuro uh, let him to uh, worship the main statue. Uh, when I opened the door, he was surprised to see an electric fan above the altar. So uh, usually a uh, temple building was built facing the south. This is the same as the Chinese emperor's palace. So emperor or Buddha is usually facing the south. And at Antaiji, we sit uh, in, in this room and it's very hot and humid at, in Kyoto in the, during summer. Uh, it become more than 100 degree Fahrenheit. So uh, we put uh, you know, above the altar, above the main altar, we put a, a electric fan to keep it a little bit cool. It doesn't work so well. But uh, so it's to, you know, people sitting could feel a little, you know, cooler uh, wind. So, uh, electric fan was above the Buddha statue. And that was very kind of, of uh, against the image of Buddha, uh, of Honzong, the most venerable uh, Buddha. You know, this is object of worshiping, but uh, at Antaiji we put the fan above the Buddha. Buddha must be highest, but above the Buddha there is an electric fan. So it's kind of st very strange things for uh, Japanese Buddhist. So when I opened the door, he was surprised to see an electric fan above the altar and exclaimed that it was irreverent to put a fan above the Buddha. People in Kyoto think that the Buddha statue is the most venerable thing in the temple. Not only people in Kyoto, but I think almost all Buddhists in Japan think so. Buddha is built to enshrine this Buddha whether this is Shakyamuni or Amitabha Buddha or Vairochana Buddha. So uh, this is the mo uh, highest value. So nothing should be above it. This is not only for Kyoto people, but for all, almost all Japanese. But he, Uchiyamura said, but in Antaiji, the Konzon, the main Buddha is on the other side of the hall. So Uchamuroshi is saying this, this Buddha statue is not the Honzon, but uh, 
people sitting, not the people, but this people, people's zazen is honzon. Uh, so, but in Antaiji, the honzon is on the other side of the hall in the activity of zazen. So he think uh, zazen is the honzon of Antaiji. I'm sorry for the <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> we don't pay so much attention to Buddha. And we do, we didn't do morning or uh, noon or evening service. So we don't, we usually don't even, you know, uh, make prostration to that Buddha. So we, I don't really remember what the Buddha statue was like. But uh, that is Uchiyamuroshi's intention. Our Zazen is a Honzon, not the statue. The electric fan is installed above the Buddha statue to keep the room cool in the summer for the people who sit. It's important to keep the room cool in the summer and warm in the winter. This is what uh, Dogen Zenji said in Shobo Genzo Zazengi. He said we should take care of the place to sit, to practice Zazen, and it should be cool in the summer and warm in the water. I, I'm sorry, winter. So that's why he put an uh, electric fan above the Buddha statue. Uh, so the, he said the Buddha statue is just an embodiment of Zazen. Embodiment is an expression in the form. So that means Zazen is a no, statue, Buddha statue is a miniature model of Zazen. Or Zazen means this uh, way of how things are, you know, within, uh, you know, great sky, things are freely coming and going, impermanent and no substance, no self. That is Buddha Dharma. And in our Zazen, we sit right there. So this is Buddha Dharma. Our practice is Buddha Dharma, not the statue. But this is kind of very unusual, <laughs> unusual thinking in Buddhist country. So uh, the Buddha statue is just an embodiment of Zazen as the most venerable thing. So, uh, Uchamuroch thought Zazen is the most venerable thing. And Zazen is the reason Antaiji is existing. Uh, opening the hand of thought for oneself should have ultimate value. So this letting go of thought or opening the hand of thought, that means we, we, we open ourselves toward this entire uh, universe or great sky. We simply become a part of great sky. And he said, if we are not careful, we are apt to grant ultimate value to something we've just made up in our head. We think what we think in our brain is most important and always true, absolutely right. And within our brain or within our thinking, we create a kind of a system of value. And the most valuable thing, uh, usually in the common uh, world is wealth or fame or status or those things or health those are the highest uh, 
highest value. We in, a, in our human uh, system of value. But our practice of Zazen is we don't fight against those kind of desires, human desires, or we try not to eliminate them, but we just let them come and go freely. And we don't, even though they are there, we don't take action based on those human desires. Uh, so, uh, worldly types are always in a haze, uh, thinking that money, fame, or st uh, status is the most valuable thing. Uh, so in our daily life, we also have to take action based on our system of value. But in our Zazen, we can let go, and it's safe to let go. And we see, you know, what we think most important is not really most important. Most important thing is this uh, structure of being. We are interconnected with all beings. And this entire interconnectedness is actual self. Uh, but we uh, always worldly types. We are always also worldly types. Uh, always in a haze. This haze is the same word uh, circular used as bokeru. We cannot see things as they are, but somehow in Uchiyamaroshi's uh, expression, we cook what we experience using our thinking. We process and something uh, happening in our mind and we think that is reality, but that is the man-made reality. So by letting go of all those thinking, we just, how can I say, uh, it's like, uh, you know, in the muddy water, you know, the muddy part go down and the upper part become clear. So uh, within our body and mind, you know, all those, you know, selfish, self-centered idea is coming and going. Still, we are not being moved or being pulled by those things. When we are exciting and uh, our mind become a haze, we take actions based on those thinking. But our doesn't allow us to, without moving, being settled down on that ground. Uh, since we sometimes become absent-minded and forget what is most important, we need to practice and reflect, reflect upon ourselves continually. So our Zazen is the way we remember what is most venerable, what is most important, not to fulfill our desire. That's why we have to continue to practice. And Uchemrosh or Dogen then said our practice is endless. He said our realization is beginningless, but our practice is endless. So the, for, the goal of our practice is not to attain realization, but being awake to this reality in which we are living from the very beginning. Even we are completely deluded, still we are living within that reality. 
So uh, this is what I mean by saying Zazen is the most vulnerable thing in our lives. So that is the meaning of Zazen is the honzon of Atantaiji and also within our daily life. Uh, and for next uh, few paragraphs, he talks about true teacher. You know, last month I talked about what a uh, true teacher, uh, what Dogen wrote about what is true teacher. Uh, that is Shoshi. And I introduce Fat Dogen Lot in Gakudo Yojin Shu. Uh, the point uh, to watch in practicing Buddha Way. And that in that says basically, uh, Fat Dogen said is a true teacher is a person who's uh, well in Japanese, Jo Ge So O Gyo is practice and Ge is understanding and So is in this case mutually and O is correspond, respond or correspond. That means uh, the person's practice and person's understanding about Dharma or Buddhist teaching are corresponding each other. That means uh, his practice is what he understood. He practice his understanding and he understand what he's practicing. So these two should be together, always together. But uh, depending upon who we are, depending upon our karmic uh, uh, karmic forms or karmic consciousness, we usually put this side or that side. We put some people put emphasis on studying Buddhist philosophy without practicing so much. And other people uh, practice, but no, those people don't like uh, studying, you know, philosophical things. So, but Dogen said, these two should be one, should be always together. And I introduced the story about Sawaki Roshi. When Sawaki Roshi was young, he, he, <coughs> he, while he was staying at uh, a hedge as a uh, lay worker, he couldn't become a monk at a hedge. He found, he felt Zazen is really vulnerable and important but he, did, he knew nothing about why, he, because he never pract, uh, studied Buddhist teachings. Uh, and uh, next year, when he was 17, he was ordained uh, in Kyushu, and he practiced together with the original teacher for two years until he became 19 and he went to a monastery, but he didn't like the monastery. He didn't like the abbot and he didn't like other monks and they didn't like him. So he was not happy. But one teacher visited that monastery, you know, asked uh, the abbot to uh, allow this person, this uh, 19 year old, you know, a uh, young person to come to his temple. Uh, and he was very important. His name was uh, Hueoka Ryoun. Maybe the name is not so important. 
uh, but this person was important for Sawaki Roshi's life. He, he taught what Zazen is. He directed Sawaki Roshi to Dogen Zenji's teaching. Zazen practice as Dogen Zenji's teaching. And uh, the first text, this teacher, Fuyaoka Ryoun Roshi, uh, taught Sawaki Roshi was Dakudo Yojinshu. That's the same text, and uh, he taught in order uh, to be a good true teacher or true practitioner, we should uh, both do practice and understanding of Buddhist teaching. But Sawakiro, he was young, so he uh, wanted to gain enlightenment. He doesn't care about Buddhist teaching. But this person strongly said, uh, so he wanted to study Shobo Genzo, what Dogen wrote in Shobo Genzo. But he, he uh, Fuyaokaro said, don't be in a hurry. In order to study Shobo Genzo, you have to study Buddhist teaching in general. Otherwise, you cannot understand. Uh, that was the instruction uh, Saoki Roshi received when he was 19 and he couldn't practice with that teacher because uh, he was drafted. He became a soldier when he became 20 and he uh, was a soldier for seven years. During that seven years, you know, Japan had a war against Russia. So he couldn't uh, stop being uh, the soldier and he was almost killed. But anyway, after seven years, he was released from the army. Uh, what he did was to study uh, yoga chara teaching at a uh, monastery, uh, the, uh, one of the oldest Buddhist temple in Japan that was established in the seventh century, right after Buddhism was introduced. And that was a Yogacara monastery. And so uh, studying Yogacara teaching was the main thing for uh, monks or priests in that school. And same as, you know, uh, monastery in Sotoshu, you know, the studying is free. They don't need to pay. So, uh, you know, he, with Sakurashi didn't have money, so he couldn't go to school. So he studied yoga chara teaching at that monastery named Horyuji. And he studied there for three, about three years. And after that, he started to practice Zazen uh, really seriously. Uh, after he left that monastery, he borrowed a small abandoned temple. And he lived by himself. And he when he was there, he practiced Zazen all day long and he didn't care about what he ate. And, uh, you know, he sometimes visited uh, other teachers, uh, like Okaso Tanroshi. But anyway, uh, he really focused on Zazen practice. After he thought he understand Buddhist teaching as a whole and never uh, misunderstand what was teach as a Buddha Dharma. So Sawaki Roshi was a, a teacher who, whose practice and understanding are always together. That's why Uchiyama Roshi became uh, he, Sawaki Roshi's student and disciple. So for Uchiyama Roshi, Sawaki Roshi was really, really a true teacher who understand uh, Buddhist philosophy and all he practiced 
thoroughly practice Zazen. But somehow he said, uh, here in this section, he said, no human beings can be a true teacher, but only our Zazen is true teacher. So uh, somehow, you know, his saying is very unique within uh, Soto Zen tradition. You know, Gyoge So O is a kind of a, a definition of the true teacher. And that was to until Sakyos. But somehow Uchamura twisted. Anyway, let me read uh, these paragraphs. <coughs> Uh, the, this applies equally well to the notion of a true or a genuine teacher, that is true teacher or shoshi, in Japanese shoshi. Rogen then said, if you cannot find a true teacher, it is better not to practice. This is what Rogen wrote in Kakuto Yojinshu. So he, Uchamura, knew what Dogen wrote, and he understood. That's why he became a disciple of Sakyoshi. Who or what is a true teacher then? So he, he, again, he still he is questioning what is true teacher. If we mal, M U L L, mur mal. Read it over, think it over, think, uh, repeated it or clearly. If we mull it over in our heads and decide that so and so must be a true teacher, we are making a big mistake. That means <clears throat> uh, this is a definition of true, what true teacher can be in by Dogen. Uh, and when we read this uh, statement, and when we actually meet some teachers, <coughs> we have to think whether this person is really a true teacher, like Dogen Reji said. And when we are looking for a teacher, we don't know what is Buddha Dharma and what is true teacher. And what Dogen Zenji meant by Yoga So. So, if I think this person is a true teacher, that is, uh, we trust my thinking of this person is a true teacher. So, Uchamoroshi is, uh, you know, he practiced with Sawakiroshi for many years. Uh, he had a kind of a observation of many of Sawaki Roshi's students. One, Uchem Roshi was one of them. Uh, and even though, you know, according to this definition, Sawaki Roshi was really a true teacher, but when Uchem Roshi see uh, Sawaki Roshi's stu students, you know, some students just imitate Sawaki Roshi. And some student uh, just worship Sakyos. They don't uh, know what is the Dharma of Sakyos. They don't think about Sakyos, Sakyo, what Sakyos is teaching and what Sakyos is practicing. But they love Sakyos. So Sakyos become like an idol. And so they come to listen to Sakiroshi's teaching, and they may come to session with Sakiroshi. But uh, I remember some uh, student of Sakiroshi, he, he was already very old person uh, when I was young. Uh, he said Sakiroshi was such, such a great person. Uh, of course, that was famous. Uh, but this person doesn't 
no fat Buddha taught, or fat Dogen taught, or fat Sakiroshi taught. He doesn't care, but uh, he thinks he is good because he was a student of Sakiroshi, such a great person. But why I'm okay? So, uh, whether even the person is really a true teacher, whether uh, this true teacher become really true teacher, depending upon a student attitude. What is teacher's practice? What is teacher's teaching? Otherwise, you know, they simply <coughs> uh, liked the karmic attribute of Sarkiroshi as a person. So many of Sarkiroshi's students stop coming after Sarkiroshi passed away. That, I think that is Uchemuroshi's uh, point. <coughs> not, not simply the definition of what is to teacher, but uh, he is thinking, you know, our attitude toward that person uh, determined whether for, for the student this person is really true teacher or not. I think that is uh, why Uchiyamuroshi uh, twisted. And he said, our Zazen is, must be a true teacher. To uh, make this person as a true teacher, we have to practice Zazen, following this teacher's teaching. Otherwise, uh, you know, this person is uh, simply a kind of a, <coughs> a fantasy of that person. Uh, so Uchamuroshi said, we are only trusting our misguided thought. Our misguided thought means this person must be true teacher. That a certain person is a true teacher. So for him, uh, our attitude toward uh, the person, even the person is true really true teacher. Uh, <clears throat> that is not enough. So uh, he continues, Zazen, which is letting go and opening the hand of thought, is the only true teacher because that is what Dogen Zenji and Sarkiroshi practice, and that is what uh, they taught. This is an important point. I, I have never said to my disciples, so he started to talk about himself. I have never said to my disciples that I am a true teacher. From the beginning, I have said that the Zazen each of us practice is the only true teacher. So he, he said, no human beings, beings can be true teacher. But our practice of Zazen, following Buddha's or Dogen's or Sakyoshi's teaching and just practice by ourselves and understand it and live based on that uh, teaching. This practice is true teacher, not, uh, not other person. So he said, he never said, uh, I am a true teacher to his student. And that was true, he never says such a thing. And uh, I also tried not to uh, say, I am a true teacher, I never may make mistake, so you have to follow my teaching. If we say such a thing, that is the evidence this person is not a true teacher. Uh, so he, Uchamuro said, uh, true teacher cannot be a human being. But he said, as a human being, 
as a teacher of a human being. The person who says uh, Zazen is a true teacher is a true teacher. So the person who said, I am a true teacher, I am a great teacher, you have to follow me about everything. If, if a teacher said such a thing, then the person is not really a true teacher. Uh, and the final uh, paragraph, he said, since Sawaki Roshi passed away, after Sawaki Roshi passed away, he became the abbot of Antaiji, so he became a teacher. That was when he was 53. And he, he had to practice as a teacher. Until then, he practiced as a student, disciple of Sawaki Roshi. But uh, after Sawaki Roshi's death, he had to practice as a teacher. So since Sawaki Roshi passed away, I have been giving Dharma lectures, that is Teisho, to my disciples. So he gave us lectures. But this is, this is just my role. I've never said that I am a true teacher or that I'm always right. Whether you think I am a true teacher or not is only your opinion. It's your thinking. So your thinking is not necessarily right. You know, the person, the student might misunderstand what he was saying. So uh, human beings, or human thinking is not really a reality itself. So a true teacher is just not that sort of thing. Please do not forget that the Zazen of opening the hand of thought is what constitutes our true teacher and is most worthy of respect. Uh, so I think I, I uh, continue this attitude while I'm, I was a teacher, I'm still a teacher. <laughs> but when, uh, after I uh, established San Shinji, I try, not try, but I never said I'm a true teacher. Uh, and I just what I want to practice and I talk about what I need to study. So during, while I was giving a, a genzoe, I never said this is only correct understanding of Dogen's Shobo Genzo, but I'm still a pro, in a process of studying and what I talk uh, during Genzo was a kind of a report of now I understand what Dogen, this is what Dogen might uh, teach taught. Uh, so uh, for us or for me or for in the lineage of Sarkiroshi and Uchiamoroshi, this is really important point. No human beings can be a true teacher. That means no one, no human beings can be a object of uh, worshiping. So we have to always uh, examine our attitude towards the teacher and teaching and practice. And this attitude is true teacher. Well, this is what I have to say this morning. Uh, any question or comment? Please. So it's really interesting, your, your description of 
Suwaki Roshi's students and their falling in love with his karmic attributes is very interesting. Yeah, you know, that's a problem of a great teacher. And it's a problem with a high visibility teacher. So my question for you is, how has that played out in your life? Because, clearly, people think you're a rock star. Really? <laughs> people read your books and fall in love with you. Um, it's undeniably some of the reason that people come to Sanshin from a long way away. You have students all over the world and people are interested in you and all over the world. And when you go to travel, many people come to see you. So, as the person who is now leading this place, of course, it was an early concern of mine that I slash we truly understood what you were teaching. So, uh, this is why, you know, I've been asking the questions and wrote the little booklet about non-reliance, and that was my own attempt to try to understand my job in a certain kind of way. Not only as your student, but as the person who's now in this place. So I'm just interested in your observations in your own teaching life. Do you think we understand what you're teaching? Are we in love with you for your karmic attributes? How do you <laughs> how do you see that? And you may not want to answer that question in public, I don't know. Uh, but do you have any observations about that? As uh, Sanchin kind of goes forward? I don't know. <laughs> I don't trust my observation. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for example, Sakiroshi student, when he, Sakiroshi, uh, is gone, uh, they couldn't continue. So uh, it doesn't last forever. So uh, we'll see in the process of uh, time flowing. I think so. Uh, I cannot make judgment. You are not good student of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I never make such a judgment, but I never reject. You know, people come in, just come and practice. Uh, I think that is only thing I could. Even Sakura couldn't reject those people. Even he knew, and he, he, I think he tried to avoid, but somehow he couldn't avoid. So that's a problem. Do you have any opinion? Uh, no, it's just something I want to pay attention to. Um, because, you know, when I was appointed to, to take this over from you seven years ago, I had board members who were completely convinced that as soon as you stopped leaving Sashin, no one would come. And my first response was, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was really very pleased to see that that is exactly what didn't happen. People certainly continue to come to Sashin, even when you're not in the Zendo. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really good sign. It meant we were here for the practice. Mm -hmm. And while, yes, you have groupies, <laughs> yes, you have people who would love you, um, I was happy to see that a significant portion of people, mm -hmm. what they really had gotten from you was Sashin. And mm -hmm. it was important to sit Sashin. Um, so I just, it's something I just want to continue to observe. And it was just really interesting to hear about that dynamic in Salaki Roshi's day, because I mm -hmm. see very much many similar things happening now, or have happened over these 20 years, uh, which is why I wanted to be sure that we were really listening to you about what your practice is, because I don't think we get that from the books. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I think books are great, but I don't think it's the same thing as trying to pay attention to what your practice is. And I think that's what you're handing us, so mm -hmm. it just feels really fortunate that we can actually be in person in a room for some period of time trying to, you know, watch and learn from you what, what your practice is, because I think that's what you're handing us. Yeah, uh, books are problems. <laughs> you know, Dogen Shobogendo is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my book, my books are not so difficult like Dogen's, but still, you know, there are 
various way to interpret, not only the Dogen, but uh, Shakyamuni's teaching was also, you know, Shakyamuni taught uh, to the other kind of medicine of each person's sickness, which can be helpful for that person in front of him. But many other people uh, hear it and interpret in their own way. That was why so many, so many sutras were made. And uh, <clears throat> depending upon the sutras, uh, the teaching is somewhat uh, different. So I think that that is not really a, a matter of good and bad, but, but that is how human beings, human nature can be. So uh, this is not what we should making a border and we should be this side and because those people are, that, uh, are beyond that boundary, so they are not good. I'm good. If we think in that way, that is against Buddha's teaching also. Uh, because, you know, the, always there are possibilities those people can change. Uh, so th this is a really interesting thing. Without those people who really simply love Buddha, you know, you know if people only like Mahakashapa was a, could be a disciple, I think probably Buddhist tradition doesn't continue until today. So we cannot uh, negate those people. Please. Uh, <clears throat> what you say in your book, and I'm sorry, I don't know your, your, your name, I, uh, but you're, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I, I saw it in writing, I forgot it. But I'm brand new. I've been to Sashin's other places. Um, but, uh, but you've done a nice job, I think, in setting the tone because when I'm reading it, it's, you know, like, um, and, and Uchiyami Roshi's teaching is that during Sashin, there's no Dharma talks, there's no interviews, it's you and the wall. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 um, uh, so I, th you know, I just wanted to say, I think you've done a nice job in your writing to kind of take that step, uh, of, of the transition mm -hmm. and coming from a fresh perspective, you know, you know, per, uh, perhaps, you know, for better or for worse, you know, that's how it comes across. And, <clears throat> um, she's also right about something else. Um, I'm embarrassed to say this uh, 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 now, but about an hour and a half ago, I told this young man right here that you're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> did I not? I'm sure did. <laughs> but, uh, I vindicated. <laughs> but, uh, so, but so, uh, my question: the twist, okay? Now the twist, as I understand it, is that you know, you know, you're sitting there, you're giving a talk, but you're not the teacher. Um, um, you know, other people might give a talk, but the real teacher is us sitting, doing zazen, and the experiencing and the processing. You yeah. might say that happens when you churn and you do zazen. That's what I'm taking away as far as the twist in the true teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, is that close? Uh, yeah, I think that's the point to Uchamuroshi is, uh, is uh, speaking. You know, true teacher is not a person. But true teacher, of course, true teacher, true teacher is not a student. But uh, something happening between teacher and the student uh, as a kind of a dharma wheel. Dharma wheel turning. Dharma wheel is turning somehow. Okay.
Thank you. Uh, Hoja, Hoja San, oh, yes. is it possible still to ask one question? I'm sorry. Uh, please. Yeah, thank you, Hoja San. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry for taking time. Um, I have a question just. Um, I have a constant problem that I can't find a teacher. And I, I always, I'm stuck on this. What Dog and Zenji, Zenji said, if you cannot find a true teacher, it is better not to practice. So I'm afraid because I don't see a teacher as a rock star. I see teacher as a facilitator, as somebody who helps, but not in a self-help way, but in a way to realize something. So uh, my my problem is that I'm trying to find a teacher who will teach me that, but I can't because of the location where I am, where I am also background in Jodo Shinshu, where we don't have necessarily teachers and also background being a monk in one of Hindu denominations for a very long time. And uh, I, I see that Zazen is what I need and want to do. But the problem is, um, uh, what should I do? Because everything points at the thing that Zazen, in, in Zazen one has to find a teacher in order to see that perhaps one doesn't need a teacher, that everything is, as you said, is actually a Zazen and that one, the teacher is actually that facilitator who helps. I don't know, perhaps I'm wrong, but that's what I wanted to ask. And I'm sorry for asking a question before you were going. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, Dogen then said, uh, if you don't find true teacher, not to be, better not to practice. Uh, but uh, that was not really true. <laughs> and true for himself. That means he couldn't find true teacher when he was at the Tendai monastery. So he left that monastery, but he continued to practice and study and trying to find a true teacher. And he practiced with uh, his Japanese teacher, Myozen, uh, for seven years. And they went to China and practiced five more years. So, and when he met uh, his teacher, Tendo Nyojo, or Tendong Ryujin, he finally found a true teacher. So, he started to uh, practice as a monk when he was 13 years old. <laughs> and he met Rujin when he was 25. So for more than 10 years, uh, he has been studying and practicing and searching to teach her and for him. And uh, so, you know, he was very patient. Uh, so I think today, you know, uh, instruction is available through uh, reading books or uh, Zoom or anything else. There are many different uh, source of teaching. So it's kind of uh, not possible, it's not possible, not, it's not impossible to receive the uh, right correct teaching but uh, i think it's important to actually meet the person uh, actually when dogen first met uh, his teacher Rujin, he said i Hitonyao, i met the person this meeting actual encountering and receive the influence, a kind of a dog and call this a face to face in, uh, intimate influence encountering, I think is important. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what is your actual situation, but uh, if you have a chance or a possibility to uh, visit some teachers, uh, I think it's a good thing, a beneficial thing for your practice also. Well, uh, it, this uh, answer to your question?
Yes, thank you, Hoja-san. I'm really, really thankful. Thank you for your time. Yes, I, I have uh, also community. I'm, I'm connected uh, on and off with con community in Italy, connected with you. But unfortunately, I'm I'm far, far away from anything. And the practice, practice. Uh, I'm in United Kingdom and uh, Ireland of Ireland connected. I'm actually on the at the island of Ireland, and there is no practices. I checked everything. There are the other places, but it's nothing. I I really, my 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 way is actually the 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 path actually of Sawak Hiroshi because it is just it's it's just what I see that it's what what it's. Uh, what is with me so um and and uchiyama roshi and your your path as well not because i see you as a rock star because i see you as a as a teacher and i i'm inspired by that and thank you so much for everything well if it's your situation uh, i hope you can continue to practice in that way and if you have a chance you can uh, visit some uh, teacher thank you Thank you very much. Thank you, Hoji Sam. Your Say. practice. Um, I was going to, when, when uh, uh, people ask to become a priest student of you, uh, you, I understand, always say the same, uh, I think, three things. Um, and it seems kind of relevant to this conversation. I think maybe a lot of people who are, aren't uh, priest students maybe haven't, haven't heard those things from you. So I thought maybe uh, if you would be willing to to share the, those things that you tell when people ask to ordain with you. <laughs> what, I did, what did I say to you? <laughs> well, from what I understand, you say the same thing to everyone. So like like the, you can't you can't take care of us, for example, you know mm -hmm. that set of things. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe if you could share share that idea because I, I think it, it's. Um, I think it helps for, for people who uh, have maybe this wrong idea about what a teacher is. I think when you explain that, it, it's sort of helpful. So. Well, that was what I studied, learned from my teacher. Next day, I was ordained. Uh, for my ordination ceremony, my father attended. And my father asked Uchiyam Roshi to please take care of my son. And the next day he said, I, even though your father asked me, I cannot take care of you. If you want to be my disciple, you have to, I have to uh, follow uh, his direction and walk with my own legs. And he said, I never... Uh, uh, watch his uh, my students. I'm just practicing going forward to the direction he need to go, that is to the Buddhahood. So <clears throat> that is the one thing I think I said to you. <laughs> but what is other things? Um, well, I mean, that's the main one that I, I mean, it was just for me, it was almost eight years ago i think so I, yeah. I don't remember perfectly well but i i remember you telling that story. i think that is the origin of uh all reliance i think you, you said something also like related to that about um like uchiyama roshi said that he he sort of is walking the path himself and like you as the student can kind of follow him, but he's not really going to direct you. So it's sort of yeah. just up to you. To... Yeah, I think that is what he meant when mm -hmm. he said, I have to walk by with my mm -hmm. own legs towards the uh, direction he was walking. What else shall I say? Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. that's the yeah I think that is the main one. <laughs> So what he said is, teacher is not a, a caretaker at that child care. Okay, anything else, please? So, uh, uh. Oh. Yeah. I'll give one question and then we'll go to you, Asa. 
Okay. Um, so I'm wondering, um, you, you mentioned that at Antaiji, they, or you, did not do um, like a morning service. There was no chanting, there was no prostrations to Buddha, and and you said you feel sorry for Buddha <laughs> in that case. And and you said that that was sort of, I mean, that was a particular choice that Bhikkhyama Roshi made to sort of drop that away yeah. so that Zazen could be seen as true teacher in, in a certain yeah. sense. And so I wonder if you could talk some about why you think he made that decision and then why here you've sort of decided to to hold that practice that we do every morning. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, while Sakiroshi was alive, we can worship morning service. Uh, so it was not Sakiroshi's style. This is what Uchamurashi uh, changed. And the reason why he stopped doing services is to really focus on Zazen. You know, in Japan, there are many Zen temples, more than 10,000 Zen temples. So people knew, people who are interested in Zen or Buddhism knew what people did at other Buddhist temples. So they understand why Uchamurashi stopped doing this. Uh, because Zazen, as, as he said, Zazen is a true teacher. And uh, <clears throat> Zazen is also a teaching. Zazen is not self-development. Uh, so they focus on Zazen and, and Uchamur to focus on Zazen practice, he stopped doing morning service. And uh, until, until I became a teacher at MZMC, that was 1993, uh, I, I was ordained 1970, so for, uh, no, that is not true. Uh, I, until I became a caretaker of a temple after returning to Barazendo, to Kyoto, I never did uh, morning uh, services. And I started, in order to live in Japanese temple uh, beside Antaiji, I had to. So I uh, began to do services. Uh, and uh, when I established Sanshinji, I could make choice to uh, really practice as I did at Antaiji or something else. So uh, I thought in Japan, people understand, understood what not having morning service means and if they want or if they are interested in uh, to that kind of practice they have there are many places they can practice and Antaiji was the only place uh, practitioners can really focus on sitting as in practice so Antaiji was a kind of a special place who really want to practice Zazen. But uh, when I moved here, you know, there's no other Zen centers or even Buddhist temples near here. So if I just sit, uh, you know, people think that's it, that they, without understanding what this means, uh, they just accept that it is everything. And, uh, you know, kind of a common understanding of Zen practice uh, 
uh, in the world is to practice zazen or some kind of meditation is to improve oneself. Uh, so if those people practice here only zazen and they, if they think that is enough, then that is a problem, I think. So mornings, not only morning, but making, doing service is a, a dedication. Important point of doing service is making a dedication. That means, uh, you know, after chanting some sutra, uh, you know, uh, the one is always recite dedication and to we dedicate this merit to all living beings or to Buddhas and ancestors. So important point of doing service to me is to understand our practice of Zazen is not our simply our personal uh, development, but uh, we dedicate the merit we create in in our practice to all to Buddhas and ancestors and all living beings means there's no merit to this person. And I think that is really important that uh, our Zazen is not this person's uh, personal actions to uh, become better person. But this Zazen practice is to wake, to awake to the reality that we are living together with all the beings, uh, you know, Buddha's ancestors, uh, people in the past, and all living beings is in this present moment. So our practice is possible uh, only within this framework of time and space and with all the beings. Uh, I think that is a point of uh, doing the services, chanting and making dedication. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, how can I say, omit that, that part of our practice. That makes sense? Okay. I have one question, I think, from Asaf online. Uh, hi. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, the, the, what you said, the, the, uh, what happens between the student and the teacher while Zazen, it's like while not talking, while just they are just together, but they don't speak. Something happens there. This is the this is the real thing. And and also I wanted to to ask you about anger. If if a good uh, like Buddha. Buddha mentioned uh, human beings all suffering. So a good teacher probably can understand you suffer and you can understand that he suffers also as a human being. And now I would like to ask about anger. If anger is a quality that consists all the bad issues in, its, in itself, like, uh, like judging other people, uh, mistreat other people, does anger, is it the the big energy that takes all this, uh, all these bad qualities in its uh, in itself. And if a good teacher, you you cannot feel angry near near a good teacher. If this is the great quality of of eliminating the anger of your, from your system, if that what makes uh, if the, and then you can dedicate yourself to other people without anger, without, uh, if this is, because some religions and also in Buddhism, I, I had, if you don't anger, have anger at all, if you clean all your anger, it's like you're in heaven. It, and if you've got anger, it's like you are in hell. So if I wanted to ask you if anger is the real base of all the bad qualities. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand. So, 
could you could you interpret? Yeah. Other people can tell me if I put it correctly. So in, to summarize, to bring it down mm -hmm. to something very manageable, Please. he's asking about the role of anger in practice mm -hmm. and whether true teachers still have anger. And is anger the energy sometimes that drives perhaps activity for good or bad? Um, do we need to be? You know, so sometimes, for instance, you've talked about sometimes uh, we're we see suffering in the world. We might feel angry about the suffering, but it's not about this person, right? It's about doing some good for others. So he's he's interested in the whole role of anger within practice and teaching. So maybe you can say something. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I did. I didn't talk. About, no, I said something else. All right, try again. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, I I try to explain. Uh, I asked about anger. Uh, for sure, a, a good teacher and a good student is something that doesn't exist. There is something between the student and the teacher while they are in zazen, while while they are not speaking or not talking, they are in quiet, and something happens. This is what I understood from the lecture today. Is this uh, right? Yeah, you don't read, you don't hear me well. I think his, his uh, impression was that what you said was that if a, a teacher and student practice together quietly, um, that it's maybe not so much, I guess, about the direct teaching, but this kind of practice together in which something happens. Is that right? Well, at Antaji, during the session, we have no talk at all. Uh, yeah. Complete, we keep kept complete right. silence, so, but. Uh, uh, rest of the time, during, not uh, during session, you know, we live together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, I, after, for example, after lunch and supper, he came uh, to talk with us and we had tea together. So, and also he gave uh, lectures regularly. So, you know, we had that communication. Yeah, so, so this is, ah, sorry. Uh, this is what I wanted to ask, like when the teacher, uh, like when he speaks with you, it always to eliminate the anger in the students. Like if a good teacher always points, points you to a, to a place when there is no anger, and the, if you eliminate all your anger gradually, then you won't have uh, any judgment for other people. Then you go to serve other people. I wanted to ask if the anger is the main uh, problem in human being, in homo sapiens, we are homo sapiens. If the anger in us, it's the main energy that, that creates all the problems and the good teacher you always feel safe with him you don't feel anger you feel more peaceful and gradually when he speaks he takes away the anger from you never mind that uh, forget about it it's okay thank you thank you so, so is is the role of, of a teacher mm -hmm primarily to uh, remove anger in, in students. Uh, so like, is it, is it your role primarily to, to help people release their anger? Um, and and the, is, is anger sort of the main problem for humans? One of the main problems, I think, because it's one of the three poisons. So what? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I could remove some people's anger. <laughs> uh, I don't know what. And Uchamura didn't uh, take my anger away. <laughs> I had to do it by myself. Uh, so, in my understanding, uh, then teacher is not like a psychiatrist taking care of, you know, uh, people's, you know, emotional or psychological problems. Mm, 
thing, you see. Well, it is the answer <laughs> to, uh, I'm sorry if I, I don't understand your, your question. The teacher also had a question, had a anger. I think probably Buddha had the anger also. But between you and your teacher, if there is anger, between the student and the between the student and the real teacher, the real te after he finds the real teacher, if there is anger between, if there is any kind of, of anger energy between them, is this one thing you know that when you find a good teacher. You don't have any anger between you. It's something uh, at some point that maybe at the beginning there is anger, but some point when you stay together with a teacher and he speaks with you, you're in quiet, you don't feel anger because this is one of the most, uh, of the worst, uh, one of the three poisons. <laughs> Could you explain? I guess, so maybe I could, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think uh, that personally, my relationship with Hojo-san, uh, Hojo-san usually doesn't make me angry, because <laughs> I, I think that's kind of his personality. But I think we're, we're both human beings, and I, I think that um, probably he's been angry at me, maybe, and I've probably been angry at him occasionally. Um, and I think that that's normal. I think that, you know, maybe this idea about some relationship where there's no anger is a little bit unrealistic. Um, and I think that that's kind of our practice as Mahayana Buddhists is, is sort of um, living in this world where samsara and nirvana are together, you know, we're not really going to fully escape anger uh, and have this perfect heavenly relationship. Um, although we do try to manifest that in the world as best as possible. And I think that a healthy student teacher relationship shouldn't be one, of course, based on anger. Um, but I think that, that as humans, we can't fully escape it either. So that would be my way of answering it. <laughs> and it's close to noon, so we should probably. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I probably I didn't understand oh, okay. your question. Okay. So can we finish? Okay. Thank you very much. much.